Welcome to Tech Brother with Ahmed. Today we are going to learn how to execute multiple Dart SQL files by using SSIS packages. So for this demo, I have uh, prepared some scripts. So, so the very first one is I'm creating a table, and then I will create multiple SQL files uh, that will be inserting some data into this table. So you can go ahead and create this table, and uh, I did create it actually before. So drop table. I'm going to drop it, and then uh, create this one for you. So you can see that I drop the table. I'm going to create this table in one of the database called TestDB uh, on my server. And then uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create uh, some SQL files. So this is a uh, one record I'm going to insert and uh, save as a SQL file. So insert into DB or test table and values of one and Raza. So let's go and save this one. Save script. So I have created a folder called source. SQL folder on my desktop and uh, you can create the folder anywhere you want it so I, I'm gonna name this one as a script one let's make changes to this script let's say two and we write another name Amir and let's save this one as script two okay two. now what we have we have two files sitting in one of the folder and those are dot SQL files and we want to create SSIS package to run these files and whatever they do in our case they are inserting the records but uh, there could be scenarios they will be deleting updating creating new views or you know there, there could be different uh, type of files you will be executing so open your SSDT or bids go to the file and create new and project in our case uh, we are going to create integration services project so I'm going to name this one as training SSIS project create new directory okay so it created a project and with one uh, package itself so we can go ahead and use this package and name it pkg underscore execute SQL files all right files okay make sure you, uh, you don't uh, remove this dot otherwise uh, it is going to place uh, your uh, package file under in the miscellaneous uh, folder and uh, you want this one under SSIS packages okay when you rename it just keep it uh, in mind uh, you don't uh, don't remove this extension dot DTSX okay so now as we are reading the files from the folder one thing we can do we can hardcore code the values inside the SSIS, SSIS, uh, SSIS package or the second part is we can uh, create a variable and save the folder path uh, in the variable so I will suggest create a variable always because uh, when you are going to deploy your packages to different environments you need to make changes uh, you know there could be different folder structure and you can always provide the value to this variable according to the environment by using the configuration so let's uh, go ahead and create uh, a folder uh, variable and we can call it folder path you know that's where our SQL files are going to be this is string type and go back to your folder just copy the path okay and paste it here now we can add the backslash here so we don't have to write in expressions or we can leave this one as it is and we can write, write in the expression let let's leave this one as it is and we can add an expression to to read multiple files from the folder what we need we need for each loop container okay so bring the for each loop container to the control flow pane and then open it once you open it you will see the collections and we are read in the file so we have to change it to the for each uh, file enumerator so let's click on this one and uh, see this is t asking us okay which from uh, from which folder you want to read the uh, files so in our case uh, yes we are reading from the folder but we want to use the variable value so we go to expressions and then go to properties so in the properties is telling us the directory that's what the folder path is so I select the directory and then I'm going to provide the variable so folder path all right and evaluate it and it's working fine so okay now the next step is uh, 
read every file so let's say if we have a .txt file sitting there or somebody has put down, uh, some excel file by mistake uh, so uh, this this uh, package is going to fail we don't want to do that we are concerned only with dot sql files so a static dot dot sql mean I read every file that has extension dot sql okay so i want to save the name and extension that's what i want to get it and then uh, i have to save that in some variable so here I have to create a new variable and I'm going to name this variable file name all right and this is going to be string okay so index 0 that means this is the first variable uh, and uh, then hit ok so now what we are doing we are reading uh, fi uh, files one by one by using for each loop okay let's go to the next step our next step is executing those files okay so we have the folder path we we read the file names and we want to execute them to execute the files we need to use the execute sql task so bring execute sql task inside the for each loop okay so double click on this one now here we have to provide some information so the very first thing is okay we want to run these sql uh, files on which database or server so uh, we I'm using OLEDB and we know that we have created a table on this server and we have a database named testdb so that's where we wanna run these files okay so let's go back and create a connection so OLEDB connection and uh, I the connection is already there I can delete this one and show you how to work so it's going to pop up and ask you some information server name so you can click here it's gonna take you some time to bring all the servers on the network and then you can select what is yours and do you want to use it or you can always go back to SQL server and say get the name server name okay so this can save you some time you know and you can copy from here and then go in uh, go in here and just paste it here okay but it, it will work any both ways it's your choice so select the database and test the connection all right so we have created a connection okay and now the next step is from where the SQL statements are coming okay it is a direct input if it is direct we can always write insert into this table and uh, you know that's gonna be running um, on this database but in our case they are the files so we have to make connection to the file and those files will be run so file connection so we are going to create a new connection let's create a new connection existing file yes we have some files browse it so now in this case so for which file I should make the connection it doesn't really matter at this point because these values will be overwritten on each of the iteration with the for each loop so we can make connection to any of the file right now and then we can write expressions to change that okay so we said okay so what happened by default it created the connection name script one dot sql we said go ahead okay now let's change this one and we can name it file okay and then actually it should refresh here and um, if I was using bids or some uh, bids in uh, SQL SSIS 2005 or 2008 I have seen that it does refresh automatically but uh, in SSS DT I am not sure why it's not doing it so let's go back and change the connection name as it's the same connection we just have renamed it uh, properly named so we can see what it is and then we are gonna do okay alright so the next step is the right now this connection is pointing to the script one file but it should take the name automatically on each of the iteration and that's what we are going to do we go to properties with then we go to expressions and click on properties and connection string connection string is a complete path to the file that's the is going to be the combination of a folder path all right and then the file name okay so we add this and uh, put double backslash that's going to make it one backslash and then add sign and then you are going to use the file name okay 
So on each of the iteration, the file name will be read by using for each loop, and this is the same folder path, and that's how our connection string is going to evaluate, and then that will be executed. Right now, if you see that there is no file name, that's why you know it doesn't show any file name here, but that's fine, and uh, it will be provided while we will execute our SSIS package. Hit OK. Hit OK. So now we are ready to run our SSIS package. Let's go and see if there is any data in our table. Select start from DBO test table. Okay, and execute it. We do not see any record in the in this table right now. Let's execute the SSIS package. It should bring us two records. Start it. Okay, so the package completed successfully. Stop the package. Come back. Run the select statement. So now it it has executed both of the SQL files, and uh, it each of them put the one record in this table. Let's go back and create one more SQL, and name is John. Okay. Or uh, instead of uh, you know inserting the new record, uh, let's uh, maybe delete the record. You know, so. We can have a delete statement as well. Let me see. So we will say delete from DBO test where uh, ID is equal to one. Okay. So let's save this one. Script as script three. Okay, so let's go back and run our SSIS package and see what happened. Okay, so it executed it and now check the data in the table. So what happened? It uh, inserted the records first and then deleted the record. So that's why we don't have uh, the record one because we have delete statement third script. Right now, if you guys see that the script were run according to the time uh, the files are created but I, I would not just rely on that part you know if you have to do it you might want to uh, take uh, the file names and put in the object variable sort them out and then the, then execute the way you want in, and uh, in the sequence the way you want you know the requirement does say that so this package can be used to deploy a lot of uh, SQL statements if you have and uh, you don't want to run each of them by yourself uh, you know or this can be used to um, for your business users, sometimes they have lookup data and they create the uh, SQL statements and uh, they want to run it. You don't want to make changes in your um, SSIS package and uh, you know each time they put the new SQL statements there, it will be executed by using this package. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video and uh, see you guys uh, next time. Bye.